So, welcome all three of you. <laughs> um, I was going to, and I'm going to be doing, what's that? Badge? Do you have your badge? Badge? I don't need a badge. <laughs> what do you need a badge for? You guys know? I have no idea. So let me see. I needed to talk about at 14.30. Oh, sorry, and it's on the other side. What am I talking about, Michaela? The official title is what pr digital print technology do you actually need and how to choose your business. So, instead of having a presentation and telling you how great Mimaki is and how fantastic products we make, I thought that was ridiculous to do. You've seen that. It's done. If you want to see about our company, www.mimakieurope.com, done. So we've done the commercial part. Basically, what I wanted to do is sit 20 minutes, 30 minutes with you guys and talk to you about your needs. For example, I can ask this gentleman, do you need a rip? And he will answer yes, and he will say Caldera. Why? Because he is from Caldera. But what kind of print technologies would you need? It all depends on what you want to do. If you want to print textiles, you probably need a textile printer. You don't want a latex printer to print textiles. If you want to do transparencies, you probably need a printer that can do white. <laughs> because if not, your pictures are going to be pretty bad. So we need to know for you what you want to do. What kind of printing technologies? There's lots of them. So I'm going to ask you guys, what do you want to do? And then I can start giving you the real answers. Because I can give you a presentation for six hours about printing technologies. Is that going to help you much? So. You have a question about what kind, what, what do you want to print? So he wants to print textiles. And? Not knitted. Knitted textiles and woven textiles. And if I can ask you, sir? He was just, he was just waiting to sit down. His legs were tired. So that's okay, too. That's not a problem. You girls are printing textiles in general. You, sir? You're also with your tired legs and you're sitting down. You already have Mimaki, it's fantastic. See, now I, I really got some good customers. So, let's grab a chair. This is a VIP reserved chair, so I'm allowed to sit there. So, if you look at textiles, there's three types of opportunities for textiles. Sublimation, which is one of the biggest and most commonly used in the signage area for soft signage and sportswear, uh, swimsuits, that kind of stuff. Then you have the natural fiber type technologies where you have to go into reactive inks or acid inks if it's, for example, a silk. The difficulty in using these later two technologies is that you need to prepare and pre-treat your textiles. Then you have to print on them. Then you have to wash them or first, first steam and wash them and iron. So the, the production cycle is quite long and quite expensive. So if you're only doing you know, a couple of hundred thousand square meters a year, um, it is not really the technology to go into. You really need to do a lot of production. Or if you're only doing to do sampling, then maybe you can with a small steamer, a small washing machine, maybe even a home garden washing machine, which is possible. Although I don't think the environmental agencies are very happy with you then. But that is a technology. When you look at dye sublimation, dye sublimation is a very easy technology to, to master. You can print directly on the textile if needed, or you can print on paper transfer. And you transfer it with a heat press at you know, between 175 to 195, sometimes for flags a little higher, 200 degrees Celsius for a certain contact time, which means how long the heat is going to be on the fabric. And then it's transferred. And a lot of people don't know what sublimation is, or sublimation inks. Sublimation is nothing else than going from a fixed material, so basically a rock, changing into gas without getting fluid. So it just goes poof, you know, and there's no in between. What happens is that the volume of this small pigment particle explodes into a bigger part in a cloud. And at the same time, at 170 degrees Celsius, the polyesters open up. So now you have this open polyester basically floating into this cloud of color. And then when we take the heat away, it just reacts the small particles in the cloud become rock again, but they're captured inside the polyester. And the result is that the fabric is now colored through and through, 
which gives you two big advantages. One, it is pretty good in the washing machine. Two, outside of the washing machine, it is pretty good in sunlight because it's inside. Where normally your color would be on the outside. If you take a sinus vinyl, it's outside. The sun hits it and it's basically immediately being attacked by the UV light. In this case, there's a polyester in, you know, basically covering it, so there's a little protection there. A lot of people don't wash sublimated materials. If you really want to be correct, you should. Because there's always a rest material. So if you're going to making garments, sportswear, I would always recommend to wash it because it's better. Do people do this? No. Do the main manufacturers do this? No. They basically hope that you do your first washing after your first sports game. And if you always wonder why you have these blue jeans, and this is cotton, and you kind of finish your blue jeans on the first day, and you look at your legs and go, hmm, oh, they just became blue. It's not because you became ill. It's because the rest of the pigments that were not washed out correctly just adhere to your sweaty body. And if you're really unlucky, it might be on there for a couple of days, depending on how your washing qualities of yourself are. So I would always recommend to wash your textiles uh, before you basically send them to customers. Now for soft signage, you don't need to wash. I mean, we can put all kinds of signs up. Uh, if it's outside for the rain, you might have some bleeding because there's still some resting in it. But in general, it's not an issue. So for soft signage, nobody does. In the flag industry, never anybody does either because that's really nice. You don't need. Why don't you need? Well, it's very simple. You go six meters high. You know, you look at the flag when you're down, and you say, oh, this is a really good flag. And then it goes six meters up. Nobody can see the difference anyways. So, you know, a couple of rain, and uh, it should be okay. And this is the reality of things. This is how it works. So, I mean, we have to be realistic and uh, see what happens. So, what kind of machinery would you need to have? The next question is a difficult question again. Now we know what kind of technologies, but you need to know if you're going to produce volume, if you're going to produce the same kind of stuff all the time. Or are you only produ you're producing soft signage? Or are you going to produce, like these most of these three ladies in this seat, I know, are producing fashion? It, again, depends on your volume. So let's say you are a small volume customer, which is, let's say, 100,000 square meters a year, so 10,000 a month. You know, two holiday months. You're making good money, so it should be OK. Um, realistically, with that type of printer, you should be able to use one of our new JV33s at Mimaki or our JV300, the brand new machine. Uh, that machine will give you enough quality, enough speed on transfer paper. So you're talking 60 square meters an hour transfer paper, make your calculation, and it should be easy to do with one machine. And yes, you can go up higher, but let's take you know, reasonable good quality. And you transfer from paper directly on to the substrate in your calendar. If you want higher speeds or bigger machines because you want more, for example, like Inditex, which is a, a company uh, with Zara, Desigual, and some other brands, uh, they will produce, in, for example, our TS500 machines, which they are producing 120 square meters an hour on full speed, 24 hours a day. So they're really producing a lot of quality. Um, I was talking to the managing director. That they have eight machines, and on average, they print 600,000 square meters a month. So a volume printer. What is the difference between printing on paper and direct is the question. Um, two, when you want very high quality, it's always recommended to print on paper. The paper makes sure that there's no bleed. So the, 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 the lines are a lot sharper. Um, in general, you can use less ink because you're doing the transfer on the surface of the media. If you take sportswear, you look at in the inside of the sportswear jacket, you'll see that it's white. Outside is really nice color, inside it's white. Uh, when you look at a flag, you don't want a white flag on one side and a German flag on the other side. Um, it, well, maybe as a Dutchman, I might be thinking differently, but that's beside the point. Um, so in general, if you're talking high fashion, if you're talking sharp text, small points, those things, always transfer on paper. When you're talking flags, in general, you can do a direct print. If you're talking big signage, because you want to do 3 meter 20 signages at two meters high, go direct. So it really, again, depends what kind of quality. If you are not sure what you're going to be produced, I will always start with paper transfer. You can always move into 
the next generation by going direct. Direct has more issues of bleeding. Direct has more issues of uh, getting it right. It's a little bit more difficult. Another thing is what we can't forget, and you should not forget, is when you're printing on paper, you don't need any coated materials to print on. When you're printing direct, it needs to be pre-treated polyesters. So they have to put a coating on. The result is the polyester is more expensive. Now, Mike says that's more expensive, but if I have paper and the same textile, say that's an X price, and if I put ink on the textile, I'll probably have an X price. Well, on an average, you are completely right. Both prices are pretty much the same. There's one huge difference. You are paying more for your waste on the direct textile printer than you're printing on the uncoated version. Because your loss of a textile which is uncoated costs a lot less than a coated textile. And paper is not that expensive. So th the difference right there is your ink usage. So I would always recommend you to start with paper because it's cheaper. It's a long-term solution. It's also more ecological, a lot easier to do. Neighbor? No, it's not. It really is not. Um, you can print faster on paper than you can print on direct textile, one. Second, the calendar times are the same, so there's no difference there. Uh, it takes a little bit more usage, too, but once you've done it, once your equipment, if you take the right equipment, you know, don't spend 10,000 euros on a calendar, on a heat press. Spend 40,000. Save your money. I mean, this is a machine that will run on for 20 years. You know, it is capital of good. Spend it well. You spend it on a 10,000 euro machine, uh, in six months from now, you start crying. It is going to cost you money. Buy a real thing. When I had my uh, sublimation company before I joined Mimaki, um, we had a calendar of 120,000 euros. Three meters 50 wide, big drum, fast, good quality. I never regretted it. I could have sold it after three years for 80,000 euros, like this. Because there's no damage on a machine that size. It's an industrial machine. And with one calendar, you can feed it with multiple printers. When you have one printer, for example, with a built-in calendar, uh, a Digen and Mtex, there's a couple of machines. That's a great solution. On the other hand, once you start adding printers because your volume goes up, you're going to have to start adding cal calendars on each machine. Instead of having one machine printing and one machine finishing, it is a lot better solution. But you have to make the decision do I want to invest or not, which is always difficult. You know, it's, I can't look into your pocket, but I would recommend buy a good calendar, buy a good printer and start playing with it. You know, and if you get the machinery in-house, don't sell anything six weeks after you start playing. Profiling, you might be a genius in profiling solvent or latex or whatever. Profile, you can sit down, by the way. They're really comfortable. Um, profiling on textiles is a different thing. Because sublimation inks, a part of the sublimation inks are invisible. You cannot see them. You can only see them when they explode and they become vaporous and they become colorful. Sometimes you're printing green on the paper and you're like, oh, this is green. I, I need it to have a you know, vibrant blue and I'm printing green. Well, once it goes through the calendar, it comes out brilliant blue. So you can only measure your colors after the process. So if you start changing temperatures or you start changing contact time, which is the ve velocity of the machine, you will have different results. So you have to really narrow down your own business and say, this is the contact time I'm going to be using in. This is the speed I'm going to run it in. And that's the decision when you start profiling. And then you can have multiple materials. That's not an issue. But you need to get some standardization in your company. Or build two profiles, a fast version and a slow version. But you cannot play around with it. Because you start playing around there, colors will shift. It will be different. So coloration and, and doing profiling for colors is a lot more complex for textiles. Uh, it's not what you see is what you get. It's what you see is maybe you get. But when you measure the maybe, then you know what you're going to get. So this is kind of interesting philosophy. Sublimation is the art of the dark. You don't know till you've done it. And then you can work on it. Anything before, you're not. I hope that helps you which way to go. It's always a difficult choice. It really is a difficult choice. Are you a printer also? 
he's a distributor, so he's he need he needs you guys to print for him. You know, he he's one of, he's a customer. He you know he's distributing products, and he wants soft signage. So what kind of soft signage would you need? He needs big soft signage. He see he needs big soft signage. You also need small. He doesn't want small, so we want big. So you want to go three meter twenty, big size. You know, huge. Outdoor or indoor? Outdoor, see? He wants outdoor. Great customer. I'll tell you why he's a great customer. Because every three months, he's going to get something new for me. Because sublimation outdoor is not going to last for three years like a solvent or a UV. So it's a great customer. Every three months, you do something new. Um, take, for example, flags. It's a great story if you think about it. People always used to tell me, your flags that you sell me really are short period of time outdoor and they're really terrible quality. Then I always ask them, uh, do you put up your nation's flag? And let's take USA as an example. Yeah, I do every year on the 4th of July, I put my flag up. I have done this for 30 years. I said, well, fantastic. So how's your flag? Well, it's getting a little bit old now. It's okay. So the result is that in 30 years, you have put up your flag for basically 30 days. And it's getting a little bit old. And I'm putting you out flags for 90 days. And you're telling me that my, my, my flags are short-lived. My flag is three times better than your American USA flag that you put out for 30 years on 4th of July. A flag outdoor, maximum three months. Great business. Again, you have to replace them every three months. Talk to your customer, make a deal for a whole year. So if he has two flagpoles, you're selling him eight flags. Give him two free, give him ten for the same price. He'll love you. Look at the technology. Soft signage and textiles is something which is always going to be extra business for you. Fashion. How many of you have the same shirt on that you had on last year? Don't, please don't tell me. <laughs> Just don't tell me. Keep it in your mind. We're all wearing new shirts. In the last year, we bought something. That's great business. It's fashion. Every year we buy new stuff. Yesterday it was orange. Tomorrow it's gray, green, uh, whatever. You're making it. You have the ability with our equipment, with the equipment that's here on the show, to produce those kind of ga garments and fashion items. And they will come every three months. There's a new season. It's called spring, summer, winter, and autumn. And they're all different colors. And the funny thing is, they do this cycle of about eight colors, and then they come back. So when two years ago everything was black, trust me, this autumn everything will be black. And if it was purple, it will be purple. Because there's a cycle in this industry. They just keep on coming back. So if you had some old stuff from four years ago, you save it, you'll probably be able to sell it by this autumn. Anyway, so we all know that, and we all love it. What is the biggest benefit of printing textiles? You guys know? Wrinkles. You put out a vinyl and you put a big wrinkle on it, the customer will say, I don't accept. Take this off. I want this new. You put a big banner and there's a big wrinkle in it, the customer says, I don't accept. Please take it off. How many of you brought back your shirts to the shop because there was a wrinkle in your shirt? You never done that? You don't go back and say, oh, there's a wrinkle in my shirt. You know, this is really terrible. Nobody will tell you there's a wrinkle in their flag. Nobody will tell you there's a wrinkle in their soft sign or in their banner. Fantastic. And if you have one of these customers, today there's wrinkle-free soft signage material. Which basically, you can put it in a box, stack it in there, send it as cheapest way out. The customer unpacks it, hangs it up, takes some water, wets it down, leaves it drying. Ten minutes later, it's straight as a knock. Isn't that great? It's a self-adjusting product, and it adjusts to your pocket, your profit. This is what textiles are really nice about. So easy way to do things. But again, buy good equipment, buy good inks, buy good paper, buy a good calendar to make sure that you have the combination that's right. If not, it's going to cost you money. Any other questions for you guys? No questions. Oh, I got six minutes left. So what do I tell you? I do dancing girl type thing. 
How about direct pigment technology printing? That was the question. It's for the camera. If not, they, they never know what you said. Um, pigment technology is there, but it's still in the infant stages, in my opinion. Uh, we have very good pigment inks when it comes to our inks and Mimaki, but, and I'm saying very clearly, but, thick, deep blacks, impossible. Big, nice, fatty reds, impossible. Today. Will it come? Probably yes. I mean, let's be honest, 15 years ago, we didn't even know what a printer was. You know, so in large format. We introduced our first roll-to-roll -roll printer 15 years ago. What is going to, you know, what will the technology bring in 10 years from now? I have no idea. If you're printing pastel curtains, that kind of material, so the, the softer colors, it's possible today. Pigment inks are there. You can print on cottons direct, on white cottons. You don't need any uh, pre-treatments. There is possibilities today. But it is a certain segment of the market. If you want penetration of the colors through and through with pigment inks, it's, again, impossible. You can try and saturate as much as possible, but it is not really the big thing. Um, that's where most people will still use reactive inks for those kind of materials. Plus, pigment inks in general are more expensive than reactive inks or sublimation inks. But the possibilities are there for, for sampling, small runs. Uh, we have uh, customers in Europe printing small runs, 200, 250, 300 meters of curtains with pigment inks. Where they normally would do offset uh, or a graffure or a screen rotation, you know, 10,000 meters. And then the customer says, I got the 10,000 meters, but can you make me another 200? Well, you wouldn't imagine what the price would be if I did that in rotation. It would be very expensive. So they will print with the same software, uh, basically emulating the rasterization of the silk screen onto a digital print. So they have the same results. We do that. You know, there's their software from Ergosoft, for example, which gives you that exact mash raster as you would have from your, rot uh, your gravation, uh, your, your silk screen rotation. I have to think about these things sometimes. It's not my business. I'm a digital guy. You know, the rotation silk screen, it's gone. You know, it's like block painting. You know, that's gone too. Will digital, by the way, this is an interesting question for me to you guys. I believe so. But will digital replace analog technology? Well, there is a guy called Benny Landa, and he always said, anything that can be digital will be digital. And if you take history, you know, as a simple one, um, when they had block printing and there was a little guy doing block printing, everybody said, hey, that's good enough technology. We don't need anything more modern. Then one guy made five blocks in a row, stapled them together and did five at a time. And everybody said, whoa, that's you know, an advancement of technology. You know, Do we need that? Well, yeah, because the guy was cheaper than the other guy. So he could do five times as much production. And this is how screen went, how rotation went, and how digital will go. In 10 years from now, uh, I estimate 20%, uh, 25% of all textile being digital uh, because it's cheaper, easier, and better. Good. I would like to thank everybody, including Onyx, high class, uh, of being here. <laughs> um, I would like to thank FASPA for being here and uh, the Sign Hub. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the small informal chat, which I thought was better than just having a presentation showing how great we are as a company, which, by the way, we are. But I just wanted to be fun with you guys. Thanks for being here. Enjoy the show. Enjoy FASPA. You will really like the show. And look around that way, uh, the green thingy there. Then it should be okay. Basically, if you go there, you should be able to find everything you need. <laughs> so you don't need the rest of the show. Thanks, guys, and thanks for watching on, uh, online. I think it's going to be online later. So thanks a lot. Bye.